Today, actually, we have participants from uh, Advanced College of Engineering, and we also have participants from SIIT, and also we have other participants except these two uh, universities as well. So it is an open webinar today. Let's see. <laughs> Until, let's see. Uh, okay, I now, now to, I request our executive director of Advanced College of Engineering and Management uh, to start today's program. Uh, thank you, Raisha. Uh, let us begin today's program. Uh, professor, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Ori, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Tirayu, uh, Mr. Bipul Neopane, uh, the Principal of Advanced College of Engineering, other colleagues of Advanced College of Engineering and Management, and uh, students from Advanced College and from Thamasat also. As Raisha mentioned, there are a few participants. Uh, it is great to welcome you all in the webinar of today, and I, I really feel honored and privileged to welcome Associate Professor Dr. Uri uh, and then Professor Dr. Tirayut uh, to this webinar. Uh, we along also with have, Mr. We also uh, have we, Dr. Wari. Yeah. Oh yeah, Dr. Uri. Yeah, I think I, I pronounced the name incorrectly. Dr. Uri, that's yeah. what I mean. Uh, and and. Uh, Mr. Bipul Neopane, who is from Nepal also, which is working for uh, Thamasat University. That's really great to welcome you all. And, and I'm, I'm sure this is a wonderful opportunity to our students, basically to our students and along with our faculty members also. Uh, and then the, the topic is so relevant and then I'm, I'm sure it is useful to anyone, no matter they are the students of engineering or not. Uh, because this is uh, this is a concern to anybody, and this is what the present and the future is also. Uh, and uh, I, I know uh, the experts from Thamasat you have joined here, uh, not because for now today, not because of advanced college, but because of Raisha that I know. But uh, but I I know it will be a good beginning of relations with uh, uh, with, with Thamasat University. She is a happy graduate of. Advanced College of Engineering and again happy graduate of Thamasat University and we are happy that she is back to us and she is working as our coordinator and, and thank you for connecting with Thamasat University. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we hope we'll have a long term association, let's hope, and that will be also uh, to the best interest of the students of both Thamasat and uh, of Advanced College of Engineering and Management. Uh, we, the college, advanced college, we are partnering with various national and international 
universities and institutions and and uh, we'd be definitely happy to to work in, in different dimensions with uh, Thamasat also um, i know in thailand has been a most of the people's best destination and then this is just three hours flight from Kathmandu and then they think this is a window for the global world and then for me also that the same thing happened when it was 2004 I visited Thailand first and then started going to visiting other different countries and then uh, I, I remember that time I, I visited Thammasat University also and then I made the dean of uh, uh, Thammasat Business School and I had a wonderful discussion with him. Uh, and one of the Nepali professor, I, I remember his uh, professor Krishna, who introduced me with the dean. And then he was talking about like, how can we work with Nepal? Uh, and then after many years, again, uh, Raisha got connected with uh, this Tamasat University. I'm really happy about it. Um, and the subject of today also, this is really appealing. Uh, and uh, we we know the world is of technology and then uh, ai machine learning robotics everyone they should be aware of it and then uh, since we brought this subject for discussions I, I i'm sure it will be helpful to our students um i i remember that time also it was in 2004 when uh, professor kishna as i mentioned see thamasat university is such a amazing in terms of infrastructure that's what i was talking to him and then uh, the, uh, that professor replied me not in terms of infrastructure but in terms of culture we are really rich and and that was really the top that that uh, the statement appealed me much and and uh, and we could see in raisha also that that personality is reflected and and uh, I'm, I'm as i mentioned i'm really happy to be reconnected and and i remember uh, that time when I went, many people, they have mobile phones and that time we had no mobile phone in Nepal. And I, I thought maybe in a few years of time, we could see this mobile phone in Nepal also. But now everyone is having mobile. And if we talk about the thing, it's too old. So there are so many things we could learn from Highland, from Amasati University. And let us make it as a beginning. And uh, I, I lastly, I welcome once again the distinguished speakers, uh, Professor Uri, uh, Uri uh, Dr. Uh, Tenarat, and Mr. Bipul Neupane, along with the ACM team, and the students of Advanced College of Engineering and Management, and, and Thamasat uh, Associate of Students. Uh, and, and we hope we will be able to make this relationship for longer. So this much from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Regmi, for your wonderful and warm welcome. Uh, now, as we have already moved formally towards our program, uh, we will hear a few words from our guest. Firstly, let me give a short introduction of our uh, special respected guest from SIIT, Associate Professor Dr. Wari Kongpravishnon. Well, Dr. Wari is also uh, Deputy Director of Admissions and Public Relations in SIIT. Dr. Wari completed her master's degree from Osaka University in Control Engineering and her PhD degree from University of Tokyo uh, in Mathematical Engineering and uh, Information Physics. Well, uh, I would love to mention that Dr. Wari is one of the main reasons that uh, I got an opportunity to go and pursue my master's degree from Thailand. Uh, and uh, I have known her closely for two and, and a half years, and uh, I'm really thankful for all the opportunities and the experiences that she provided to me. And would not miss to mention that she's one of the most kind and supportive person I've ever met. I'm really glad uh, for, uh, for all those experiences, Ajahn. And uh, with this short introduction, I request Dr. Wari to give her a few words. And also, she will be talking, uh, giving us uh, some introduction on SIIT and various uh, scholarship schemes that SIIT provides. Dr. Wari, uh, the stage is yours. Thank you. Ajahn, you are on mute. 
Ah, thank you very much for nice welcome and nice speed. In fact, basing on my duty, and we would like to invite a lot of students from Nepal to join SIT. That's why I would like to give some presentation about SIT for short, lovely, uh, maybe just only three or five minutes. Can I share the skit? Yes, yes, that's the way it is visible. Ah, okay. Can you see it now? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, let me introduce SIT for short. In fact, SIT stands for Silinton International Institute of Technology. Uh, we found SIT about 30 years ago under the supportation from Federation of Thai Industry, uh, Japan Federation of Economic Organization, and also Thammasat University. And after we found SIT four years later, our beloved King Lamanai gave the name Silinton International Institute of Technology to us. And from now on, we call ourselves SIT. And in fact, SIT, we have nine uh, international programs inside. This is seven uh, field in engineering program, chemical, civil, mechanical, industry, and logistic, electrical, computer, digital. And this one is engineering field and two field in management. This is the multidiscipline field. This is management technology and engineering management. Uh, inside Thailand, SIT got the excellent uh, from the research. This one provides from Thai research society. We got the first rank info field. This is uh, ICT field, electrical engineering field, mechanical engineering field, and civil engineering field. And uh, for SIT, we have global partner. Now we have about 85 global partner, Europe, Japan, Asian, Asia, and so on. Uh, for example, for the Europe, our big partner is from Germany. A lot of TU9 from Germany. We have the MOU with, we have the cooperation with. And also from Japan, uh, a lot of duo degree we have with Japan. This is uh, all of seven loyal university, we have the MOU with Japan and uh, almost of them, about 90%, 95%, not only signing the MOU is mean that we have the activity between. And truly this is uh, from Nepal, we have two big university. This is uh, Tibuan University and Kathmandu University. Uh, to see some uh, international, this is uh, for PhD duo degree program, this is studying at Thailand for two years, study at Japan for two years. A uh, student will get not only the tuition fee, but also the stipend. Uh, they will get two degree. This is one part is from Thammasat University, another one from the Japan Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. This one is support from the JASO of Japan. And in Thai science, we got the support from the NASA. This is the biggest research center in Thailand. And for the master degree, and also Ming is also under this scholarship. This is my master degree. This is for Tokyo Tech University, NASA, and SIT. For this one, student got a degree from Thammasat and also the certificate from Tokyo Tech Institute of Technology. About one third of curriculum, the Tokyo Tech professor will fly to Thailand and teach uh, on site, but during this COVID, almost all of them is online. And also we have with the Germany, this is digital engineering, this is one half year in Thailand and one uh, half year in Germany, they get do, do all the key and also from industrial partner, not only inside Thailand, but also outside Thailand, we have industrial partner. And from the employment rate, from engineering field, we are the highest. And also Everlet income, we also the highest. And also uh, employer certification, we also the highest inside Thailand. And when the student, foreigner student come to SIT, if not COVID, we have a lot of activity. This is the student, uh, they will have their own body. They have the international line, like a night and so on. Then when you have the chance to come to Thailand, 
I'm sure that we enjoy not only the Thai food, but also the atmosphere inside Thammasat University. Uh, if you consider from this one, each year we give, uh, uh, we have coming and exchange students, about 200 students. Uh, after the COVID, the student number of students is going down, but in fact, uh, we have a lot of exchange students. And also this is the atmosphere inside Thammasat. SIT and also classroom and so on. In fact, I would like to promote this scholarship program. This is Laisha and also Pibun got this scholarship. We have both graduate student and undergraduate student. For graduate student, this is uh, you got the full scholarship and also you got the stipend. Uh, because we have the MOU together, uh, we also have internship scholarship. This is you can come to SIT for one to three months to do some research with the faculty member with SIT. This is you can get the dormitory and stipend when you come under the internship scholarship. And I just realized that a lot of professor and faculty member from at one colleague engineering of management uh, Joy this presentation. In fact, we also have the visiting professor supportation. This is we also support, and we would like to invite you to come to SIT if you have chance. Because if you say start, uh, in Thailand for one month, it means that we have the chance to talk in detail more. And maybe that's lovely about SIT. And before ending, thank you very much, Laisha and Pibun and all faculty member from at one colleague of engineering and management that make this uh, Facebook Live and also this seminar occur. I am really happy to see Laisha <laughs> and all of you too. Okay, maybe this is just lovely information of SIT and the interview of SIT to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Wari, for such an informative uh, presentation. I strongly believe that uh, all the scholarship schemes that you have presented is going to be really beneficial for all of our audience. Uh, as Dr. Wari also mentioned, that I was also one of the ca candidates of the Excellent Foreign Scholarship, and uh, I got lucky enough to uh, be uh, that I got an opportunity to experience my two years in the un wonderful university. So uh, I really hope that our fellow advanced uh, students will also get this uh, opportunity and uh, will we'll get an a chance to spend the two years of their life in Thammasat University. So um, now moving forward, uh, let me introduce you all to our uh, guest, um, Assistant Professor Dr. Tirayut Horanon uh, from SIIT. Uh, Dr. Tirayut completed his master's from AIT Thailand in remote sensing and geographic information system. Likewise, he completed his PhD from University of Tokyo uh, uh, in uh, spatial information engineering. Uh, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry, I thought there was a network problem. Uh, well, Dr. Jiait also uh, got a Young GIS Professional Award, and uh, he is the head of Advanced Geospatial Research Unit in SIIT. Uh, well, he's an expert in this field and has been uh, involved in numerous uh, real world AI related projects. And uh, I would not miss to mention that anyone who closely knows Dr. Tirayut uh, wouldn't uh, miss uh, to say that he's one of the most calm person and no one can ever catch him without a smile on his face. So I, I believe all of us can be inspired to carry this positiveness everywhere we go around. With a short intro uh, introduction, I request Dr. Tirayut to uh, give a short talk on overview of uh, AI on global perspective. Uh, Dr. Tirayut, the stage is yours. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks, Laisha, for uh, uh, introductions. Uh, very good introduction. Yeah. Um, just very short uh, sharing about this AI for global development. So actually, I don't want to uh, like present a slide because I think everyone will be excited when Mr. Vipu present uh, his slide. So yeah, the first time when this presentation is better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before I, I, I start to talk about AI, yeah, actually, I, I want to give my impressions yeah, about the Nepali student. Yeah, actually, my lab, yeah, my lab is a GIS lab. We are also working on the GIS, uh, big data, and also AI, yeah, for, especially for the spatial data. Yeah. And then we have like 
uh, three Nepali member in the lab already. Start from uh, Mr. Suman, he already graduated and then now he back to Kathmandu and start up his uh, startup company about uh, GIS and AI. Yeah. And then the second one is Mr. Vipu. Yeah. He also one of the really excellent uh, students in my lab and he published a lot. And then uh, in this year, he got a PhD scholarship yeah, to, to Melbourne University in Australia. Yeah. And uh, the last one just get in uh, last year is Mr. Agas. Now he studied a uh, master of engineering at in my lab. Yeah. So I, I will say that all three members is all excellent students. Yeah. And I really impressed uh, to his work. So anyway, you know, just if any anyone that is student at the fourth year, and then if you want to apply for a scholarship, then my lab is really, really welcome yeah, for, for all of you. Okay. Yeah. And for the uh, global AI, I, I believe that uh, everyone heard about AI. It's become a buzzword for a uh, few years, uh, like five, six years yeah, uh, before this. And also AI also come with uh, big data. It's come together. So when we have a when we have a data, a lot of data, then we can teach our computer to learn about them and then do things that is more intelligent. Yeah. And if we talk about AI, it um, can be developed yeah, in any field. Yeah. You can think of any field. Yeah. In my lab, we, we work on two, two measures. One is the uh, agriculture. Yeah. Agriculture is one of the, um, I, I can say the, the most important in Thailand because we are export most of the agriculture products, maybe same as Nepal. Yeah, Nepal. And the, uh, another, another domain that we, we work a lot AI is, uh, is the mobilities. Yeah, mobilities. Like uh, we work on a smart city. Yeah. And of course, we collect a lot of data especially for the uh, GPS data. And then that can be used yeah, to, to work on the smart mobilities. And also uh, we also work on uh, uh, the, the, the CCTV camera yeah, that also can be used yeah, to uh, utilize the AI technologies yeah, for a lot of uh, traffic engineer and the use of uh, to prevent or to um, make uh, the traffic jam in Bangkok, okay? And especially it's a lot of domain that we, you can use, yeah? like a medical side, yeah? medical side also can, can use a lot of the uh, uh, images yeah? and we can analyze those kind of images yeah? to uh, make a more precise detect of a disease. Yeah? And, and actually the city, yeah? the city also one of the um, the most uh, maybe use of this kind of AI technology. Yeah. So you can you can see that uh, everywhere we 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 visit now. Yeah. Sometimes you you can get a uh, kind of message yeah, that is really matched with your behavior. Yeah. How can how can those things happen? Yeah. Because they collect all of your information, yeah, the big data of your information, and then they know that what you want at the moment, right? So. Uh, the various domain that we, we can apply for AI. And uh, last but not the less, so my, my lab, and that, that I can say that we, we work a lot on uh, agriculture, agriculture fields and also the property fields. So you can, you can see some of the real world uh, kind of best practice from Mr. Bipu uh, research after this. So I, I hope that uh, this research can be a uh, kind of inspiration yeah, for a young student yeah, that you want to do your own research yeah, and then have some impact to the real world. Okay. So I want to say that uh, the research should not be in just only on the shelf, yeah, but it should be uh, can be applied to use in the real world yeah, and can be uh, kind of highly impact to the society. And I can say that all of Mr. Vipu's um, research that is uh, in this way. Yeah, it's a lot of impact to society. This uh, maybe brief introduction to uh, Mr. Vipu also. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. thank you very much, and then uh, hope you enjoy uh, today's webinar. Thank you so much, Dr. Jai, for your information to us, Dad.
research should not be just limited, should be focused on implemented, implementation as well. So with this note, we move forward and uh, let me all introduce you to today's uh, speaker, our mentor, Mr. Bipul Neopani. Well, uh, as we all already know that uh, he also graduated from Thamasat University, is a Nepalese, and uh, it is a matter of pride for all of us to, uh, that uh, Nepalese uh, is representing uh, Nepal in Thamasat University in a very good manner that, uh, as Dr. Tirayut has just said, so I feel really happy and glad. And uh, he, he has been working as an associate researcher in uh, Advanced Geospatial Research Unit uh, of SIIT. <clears throat> Actually, I also, uh, he's also a senior to me, and I also got a chance to work with him uh, under the same project. And uh, I must say that I uh, got to learn a number of new things and his problem solving skills and knowledge base. It was uh, really helpful. And uh, it uh, like provided much inspiration during my master's period. So, which is one of the reasons why I requested uh, him uh, to show some of uh, the works done in uh, the research units of SIIT. So with this short introduction, I would like to uh, hand over the stage to Mr. Bipul Neopani uh, and continue with his presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Raisa, uh, for your kind introduction. And thank you very much, uh, Azan Yud, for your kind words. So uh, as Raisa already gave a short introduction, I would like to share my screen and share my content. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so without uh, any ado, I think uh, I'd like to present some of our experiences and uh, works in real world AI implementation. So these are some of the experiences uh, collected in SIT in uh, advanced uh, geospatial technology research unit. So before uh, heading into the AI and rocket science, uh, maybe let's remind each other what similarities Thailand and Nepal has. The first similarity is the commonality of uh, culture and shared, value, shared values, uh, such as Lumbini and Lord, Lord Buddha himself. Uh, also the travel, uh, many Thai people dream of trekking into Himalayas and uh, Nepalese dream of sailing in islands. Uh, some economical shared values such as both rely on agriculture and uh, tourism. Uh, both countries are uh, exporting signif significant amount of palm oil. Uh, Nepalese exports, uh, exports include uh, hand handicrafts, wood, uh, woolen carpets, Nepalese paper to Thailand. Uh, both countries uh, have shown, in uh, shown help in several times of crisis, but where does the technological adv advancement stand? So talking about the advance in advancement uh, and how, we can, how AI can support growth in Thailand and Nepal, uh, I would like to talk about in the subject matter uh, about some examples and uh, without focusing much on technicalities, uh, I will... Uh, uh, share about some some of the experiences that we collected in the sector of uh, agriculture, urbanization and transportation and uh, medical uh, imaging. So I will also try to uh, help you understand how uh, we find and solve a problem with uh, within the use cases. So the first sector is uh, agriculture uh, and uh, food security sector, uh, where I'll be talking about smart monitoring, disaster management and insurance policies. So first, uh, I will show one of the example problem of a farmer and an engineer who grows several kinds of fruits uh, in his seven, 17 acres of farm. He finds uh, using drones uh, could help uh, in finding the problems on the top of the trees that he cannot see from uh, below. He, and it was a hoping time-saving technology for him. ก็บางที
ื่องจากสวนมีพื้นที่กว้างต้นไม้มีหลายต้นการเดินดูเนี่ยบางครั้งเนี่ยเนื่องจากว่าเป็นการเดินในพื้นล่างอาจจะหลงลึงหรือไม่เห็นสิ่งปกติเขาเรียกกับการมองจากท็อปวิวหรือเฟิร์สไอวิวเนี่ยมันจะมองภาพได้ชัดกว่าต้นไม้แต่ละประเภทก็ปลูกนานเช่นต้นมงคุดของที่สวนเนี่ยก็ใช้เวลาประมาณ 7-8 ปีถึงจะเริ่มมีลูกได้ถ้าต้นไม้หรือต้นได้ตายไปกลางคันเนี่ยทำให้เสียเวลามากThis was one of the projects from our uh, fourth-year students, uh, where they were able to uh, collect the images from drones and uh, stitch them together to produce informative map maps such as this. Uh, they created a canopy height model to uh, understand the growth of the uh, farm, uh, growth of the plants. Uh, also, estimate banana, uh, sorry, uh, biomass and uh, chlorophyll content and vegetative fraction. So this kind of uh, uh, this kind of system allowed uh, uh, the farmers to un understand uh, the time of harvest, crop growth, uh, the amount of uh, uh, several <clears throat> several bio, uh, features like biomass or nitrogen that farm reflects. So this uh, helped the farmers uh, meet the standard of the export into foreign countries and also understand where and what the problem is. So. Similar to uh, such example, we also used AI to count the number of banana plants in his farm. So we used several of the image processing techniques uh, and uh, we fused uh, with AI model to uh, create a multimodal plant detection system to obtain overall accuracy up to 99% to keep count and estimate the yield. <clears throat> so this was uh, also one of the published research uh, where you can find in a Google Scholar. So another example in the agriculture uh, sector could be insect classification. Uh, uh, in, in the this can also be related to last year's uh, locust invasion in Nepal, uh, which was uh, uh, which was about the classification of insects that we did uh, to detect the harmful insects in the field of uh, in the field using IOTs cameras uh, uh, and set up camera traps and AI. Uh, the server uh, is a, it receives one image uh, at the end of the day from several zones of a farm, which the AI detects, uh, on which AI de detects the presence of harmful insects. So another example could be, uh, or, or let's say one of the major problems in Thailand and Nepal is the number of disasters that affect the farms. Uh, in Thailand, the government or the insurance company has to pay the farmers the insurance they deserve for, uh, uh, from the disasters and several millions uh, of dollars are spent. So this required uh, the validation of the claim presented by the farmers. So to solve this problem, we built three, three modes of validation using drones, timely satellite images and uh, camera input geotagged images of the field provided by the farmers. So what we did on this one was uh, we used um, aerial image processing and AI to validate uh, the claims of the farmers that would save the government and the insurance providers a huge amount of money. So uh, you can see a snapshot of uh, satellite-based system. 
uh, drone based system to figure out uh, some pro the problems in the in the farm that can not be seen on uh, rgb images and um, also seen a recognition based uh, model to uh, validate whether uh, there exists flood or drought or not any of them uh, another way of uh, crop management we exercised here uh, is uh, using virtual reality for precise farming, uh, where we use drone to collect images and create virtual aerial tools of uh, previous banana farm that we uh, visualized before. So let me show you the demo. Or maybe I can show you the demo on the the one we have. Uh... Can you see my screen? So yes, the farmers. Yes. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Uh, the farmers uh, would be able to visualize the farm from banana farm, uh, the banana farm from above uh, uh, as an aerial view where they could travel around, jump around uh, and, and see the problem, visualize the problem on the field. So the, uh, this system, uh, uh, as it uses VR and drones, really helps to uh, allow to zoom in and find the problems on individual trees. I believe uh, this is uh, Dr. T. Rai in the field himself. So this kind of system would uh, really help the farmers uh, on, on immediate uh, problem recognition and, and uh, especially on the large farms uh, that includes acres of lands. Uh, let me go back to my slides. Uh, so talking after talking about the agriculture field, let's move towards uh, uh, another problem of uh, urbanization and transportation. So in the background, we can see the aerial view of Kathmandu city. So one way uh, we can plan any small city in 2021 is by using technologies like drones, uh, VR and AI. Planners find it helpful to visualize the achievement of any planning by building a digital twin of the city that is uh, generally stored in a data warehouse and made interactive to use for the planners and the stakeholders. While, uh, while talking about this, uh, let's also see a virtual tour of Thammasat University to find out what kind of measures uh, they, uh, they uh, took to control the environmental aspects, uh, uh, floodings, uh, traffic management, bicycle lanes, uh, or in the sector of sports and also building one of the Asia's uh, largest rooftop farming. So I'd, I'd like to show you another virtual tour of uh, Hamasat University. So yes, this is uh, our premises uh, inside uh, Thammasat University and uh, Srinivon SIIT. So you can see the university is very green uh, in terms of a lot of trees and there are many cones uh, uh, which are a measure to control floods. And the management of sports and also uh, Thammasat offers uh, uh, I think uh, one of the, Thammasat is one of the largest uh, uh, university with uh, bicycle lanes. So urban planners or, uh, or the stakeholders could use uh, this kind of applications to understand the situation in, in a broader, uh, broader content.
Also, uh, while we are talking about uh, drones, um, after looking at the aerial tool, once again, we can think of using AI to create auto, auto operating maps. Uh, there are several existing deep learning models uh, which you may be interested at or the students may be interested at uh, and you can find them in our recent uh, review paper on deep learning based semantic segmentation of uh, urban features in using earth observation images. So having said that, uh, let's also move uh, to another sub problem of uh, transportation. So this is another of our project with the uh, Department of Rural Roads of Thailand, where we built a near, near real time uh, system to monitor the traffic and assess the road condition of uh, urban highways. We used 5G uh, internet to transmit a real time uh, video stream uh, to our servers where an AI model classifies vehicles into seven categories. The system not only shows the traffic flow, but also creates a report on how the traffic vehicles and uh, the deteriorating conditions of the roads. So these are the real time streams so that we get from the highways and the system classifies the vehicle. And this would also help us uh, to understand what is the average uh, per car unit or maybe what is the average speed of the vehicles uh, at any time in, in the road. Uh, with, with this short demo on our uh, traffic management system. Let's also, uh, while we are talking about vehicles, let's also talk about uh, vehicle make uh, model classification and uh, license plate recognition de or detection uh, that we piloted for uh, su surveillance and security purpose. So some of these students may be interested uh, and uh, I believe that uh, there are many, uh, many other studies and researches being carried out in the similar sector. So as we are also talking about drones um, and while making utmost use of our drones in the lab, we also tested uh, drone-based uh, vehicle detection and tracking during the, that can be used at the time of uh, emergency. So this would count the vehicles in, in the road in a, from high altitude. So after uh, these demos of uh, transportation and uh, urban problem related problems, uh, I would like to move to medical sector. Uh, and uh, I think Raisa is also one of the experts uh, and her researches are based on medical images. So uh, one thing, the uh, crisis we are uh, in right now, the COVID has taught us to use the AI application of uh, face detection and face recognition and uh, indoor human tracking into, into building uh, a system uh, that, that is quite popular these days in uh, many of the uh, sports, uh, media, many of the shopping centers and, uh, and universities and colleges of Thailand. So they combined uh, the face recognition, sorry, face detection and uh, temperature detection to offer um, some automatic measures and alarms to uh, detect fever before they enter any building. Another remark, uh, remarkable adva advantage uh, or advancement has been in the field of uh, medical segmentation where the AI serves the radiologists 
to auto detect uh, pneumonia or COVID infected uh, uh, lungs. Uh, Raisa is also uh, the expert uh, in the field of uh, disease uh, severity classification. Uh, so, but anyways, uh, this the, this field uh, has the challenges of uh, challenges such as medical images, imaging processing is uh, uh, that there can be only tiny room for error and ethics come into topmost value. So, if uh, you are interested in the image, uh, sorry, medical image classification, you may also contact Raisa. So, uh, I saw, I saw you, so there, there were many research examples I could uh, remember uh, uh, of doing or getting involved. So I displayed to you uh, in the that we did in the last four years. SIT students uh, individually carry an expertise in their own respective field. Uh, I'm glad that I could share some of our works from the lab and uh, some of Raisa's works. There can be many problems that need solving in developing countries. Young students from Nepal and Thailand need to brainstorm the uh, recent examples and uh, advancement to solve both the lo local and regional problems. I hope, to, um, I hope to see some collaboration in the future. Uh, let's grow together. Thank you very much for your time and listening to me. Uh, yeah, now I'd like to hand over to Raisa. Uh, a number of queries. So now we are entering into discussion and question and answer uh, session. So uh, if you have any query for Dr. Wari or Mr. Bidhu, then uh, you can place it in the chat box and we may also select you and uh, let, uh, let you uh, ask the questions personally as well. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Vikas Acharya and I'm working as a faculty member in Advanced College of Engineering and Management. Uh, so my question is for uh, Associate Professor, Doctor, I'm sorry, Associate Professor, if I'm not wrong, Vipul Nepani, sir. Uh, so as a researcher, you are working in three different fields. You showed us about the agriculture one, uh, medical section one, and the urbanization one, smart city drones. Uh, so as a researcher, how you... Uh, how you keep yourself uh, busy or have patience to do research because I know I also have similar interest on basically on medical sectors and um, agriculture ones but sometimes I do not get the desired result and sometimes uh, my research uh, I used to think one side and uh, when I search for the relevant papers I saw my idea or the implementation has already already been done so that kind of sucks that kind of uh, Result kind of shakes me. So, how do you think, as a researcher, uh, to keep calm, uh, to know my work will uh, get proper results? So, any advices? Sir? Uh, okay. Thank you, Bikras, for your question. So, first of all, I'm not a, a associate professor. I'm just researcher in uh, uh, SIT. So, uh, and. Uh, about your question about the research, so, yeah, I also find it sometimes very difficult, uh, especially in the current times of uh, working from home, to organize myself in the in research uh, and to collect motivation uh, to read the papers. Uh, so what I do is uh, I keep updated in my field. Uh, my field is transportation and agriculture. So I, I'm not uh, uh, my researches are not based uh, in medical image process processing, those are related to RISA. Uh, so what I do is I read the most current papers and uh, try to create a database, uh, basically to, to uh, store all the uh, recentness, uh, or the, uh, let's say, uh, talking about AI, uh, they say that the half-life of AI is only three months. So any deep learning model would expire within three months. So um, meaning that, uh, there will always be upgrade and there will always be new AI model to, to uh, detect or do, to do the job. 
So I try to collect those uh, uh, new papers, uh, read the recent ones, use Google, uh, Google Scholar to keep the database and, uh, and make a table uh, for my reference. And uh, in my free time, I like to write uh, immediately and make up a, st a story uh, on how to find problems. And uh, once we have some problem, we can always go back to the database and find those papers and, uh, and uh, collect them to study what kind of progress has been made or what is the status of the uh, work right now. So yeah, uh, one of the uh, yeah, most advantageous tool is, to, is the database. Yeah, you can always start with the database and uh, also Google Scholar and uh, similar databases. Thank you so much for the answer. I hope it covered the question. So uh, Mr. Rajkumar uh, Koyala, he's, uh, you haven't typed your question yet. Can you please mention the question as well? You have mentioned one question to Neil Pana, sir. Can you please also mention the question? Can you please also mention the question? Maybe we are having some maybe we are having some new uh, technique. If there is a problem uh, with sound, sound, problem you, can, sound you, can, you can mention you can the question. Mention the question. Okay, here is a question. Okay, here is a question uh, from uh, Prina Man. Prina Man. Uh, uh, just a moment. Just a moment. Hello. Hello. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm hearing. I'm, I'm hearing my own voice. Excuse me. Uh, yes. Yes. Hello everyone, I'm Prakar Bandari. I'm currently studying BCA in Irvine's College. And as people have said, our country is heavily dependent on farming. AI farming can surely help us to progress. But since the farmer do not have proper knowledge on how to use, what might be the solution for it? Will there be training first? Okay, thank you for your uh, question, Prakar. So, uh... This kind of AI tools and uh, systems, uh, normally what we do is uh, a team of uh, researcher or team, uh, a product team uh, would help the farmers uh, to, to introduce to them uh, first. So the first step would be to go to the field and understand the problem and uh, not every problem requires uh, such sophisticated tools. So, so after deciding on the problem, let's say uh, there is a very large uh, farm, uh, acres of farm that needs to be monitored and uh, to go to each individual, let's say fruit or trees would be time taking. So such kind of uh, uh, large scale problems, uh, we, we from our lab, we go and uh, find that we can use uh, drones and uh, AI. So for example, in the banana counting one, we, we went to the field and flew some flight. We had some flights and we came to our lab and did our research. And uh, after uh, several months of research, we could develop a tool. And uh, so that tool uh, to stitch the images together, for example, to create maps or to uh, do apply. So how the user use, uh, the how the user interacts with the system is to interface. So we also build them an interface. So the farmers themselves don't need to apply drones or do some coding or, or whatever. So they just provide us uh, some images. For example, in the insurance, rice insurance project, they go to the field and take a picture and send it to us through an app. So there is a user-friendly app in Thai language or here, maybe in Nepal, it could be in Nepalese language, right? So such kind of data comes to our server and uh, our, in the server side, uh, the the server does the processing and provides the uh, provides the feedback or the answers. So that's basically how it works. 
Thank you for the question, Prakar, and for the answer, Mr. Bipul. So here is an, another question from Mr. Raj Kumar. Uh, how to implement AI in the context of Nepal since the devices are expensive enough for middle class or low class farmers? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so uh, I believe that uh, the uh, the implementation of uh, AI in in Thailand and ne Nepal should, should pass through similar kind of challenges, uh, similar circumstances, where uh, I, I believe that uh, farmers with uh, small uh, smaller uh, lands or smaller farms would not be able to use uh, this kind of technology. But uh, there can always be uh, some uh, systems, like I mentioned before, like uh, uh, where the farmer can freely download some app or uh, with the proper training, or maybe in, we present them in a simple most language uh, we present them the interface and they can just upload a few data in their own local languages and we can uh, collect the data uh, or if they need some some uh, some service like uh, if they if, if a, a community of uh, farmers would uh, come up together and uh, say that okay we we need to monitor this space then then some team would go there and uh, carry out the study and give them the final feedback so that they don't have to go with all the technical technicalities and uh, sophisticated systems. So one way could be, uh, yeah, uh, one approach would be that way. Thank you so much for your answer. It actually yeah. answered one more question here uh, in the chat box. So Mr. Sulu says that his question is already answered. Thank you for explaining in detail. So here is one more question uh, related to bridge. Uh, uh, how can you collect data or say do remote monitoring of bridges to know bridge condition as the condition can be difficult to get the data? Also, most of the data collection of bridge health condition is subjective. How can we address this with technology? So. Uh, Talking about these uh, condition assessment, I don't have much experiences uh, on this particular uh, field, but uh, however, uh, one way would be using, uh, yes, drones or maybe laser scanners. I've seen some studies, also LIDARs uh, that uh, collect the point clouds from, from satellites. So they use, uh, one reason they use uh, LIDAR is the, the resolution of LIDAR is in centimeter levels or millimeter le le level. So they also take uh, some laser scanner to the field uh, and scan the data. And this provides a very high resolution 3D model of the, of the bridge. And uh, they, they try to understand what kind of problems. So uh, another could be using hyperspectral images. Uh, uh, so I believe uh, as I'm not uh, an expert on that particular matter, I, I believe those are few examples on how they would uh, carry out such uh, 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 some assessment. Thank you for your answer. Okay, so if we have uh, some more questions for Dr. Wari or for Mr. Bipu. Okay, here's one more question from Mr. Sujan. Using drone for urban mapping can help to map the housing in urban areas. However, getting high quality image of whole city via drone is not possible. Is there any way for that? So yeah, the problem with drones is the scalability. So uh, if we want to increase the scale, so we know what we do is we use uh, high resolution satellite images. So there are some satellite images uh, that provide free service uh, like uh, Sentinel Hub. They provide uh, 3.5 meter resolution of images for free. And the data is coming every Friday, uh, sorry, every five days, within five days. So this kind of data we also use in agriculture because as they are already free and uh, they provide AP, APIs. So we collect the data from the satellite and uh, we visualize uh, on our system. So we also did that in the crop, mon uh, sorry, crop insurance project to validate um, the, uh, the problems in the farm. So yeah, instead of, uh, if you are talking about scal scalability, instead of using drones, yeah, we would, possibly use satellite or, or, the, or there can be some other drones like spring drones, which would, uh, I think, I believe that it would increase the cost 
So the most appropriate uh, way would be satellite images in this case. So he also says, could you please name the database? I think uh, you also mentioned the name, right? Is it the same? I mean, for the satellite image? Yes. Uh, for uh, uh, the name is Sentinel Hub, or you can also use Google Earth Engine. So many people have, uh, students must have used Google Earth, but there is also another tool called Google Earth Engine. And uh, some other satellite images uh, are Landsats, but they are not as high resolution as Sentin Sentinel, Sentinel Hubs. Thank you. So uh, Sentinel Hub any more queries from the audience? Um, Rohisha, ma'am? Yes. Um, Dr. Wari talked about scholarships for um, different international students. So I would like to know how Nepali students, our students can approach for scholarships for Tamasat uh, University. Okay, uh, Dr. Wari, uh, will you answer it or shall I talk about sure, it? You can do, yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So uh, to apply for scholarship in Tamasat or spe specifically or in SIIT, well, uh, there are, as Dr. Wari showed the presentation, there are a number of uh, scholarships that open like twice a year. Uh, so we can get all the information from the website of SIIT. Uh, there, like once the admission is open, then uh, they have uh, all the forms, uh, forms. So we fill the form online and we have to submit a few documents. It is not complicated at all. And all the details regarding scholarship facilities and uh, requirement for the acceptance uh, will be provided once the scholarship is uh, open. Uh, it's once the scholarship is open. Yeah. So every all the information we can get it in the website of siit.tu.ac.th. Uh, okay. if, if if I missed anything, then uh, you can add to it, Ajan. Yeah, and uh, in fact, uh, SIT semester, we have two semester a year. The first semester start in August, the second semester start in January. Uh, for applying for the first semester, uh, the due date is end of, uh, I think, April. And for applying for the second semester, this is start in July. The due date is end at allow October. Thank you. And Thank you, Ajay. We are really welcome Nepalese students to come to SIT. And in case that uh, you don't want to do the DG, you can come as the internship student to, for one to three months. And you can maybe, if you would like to go to Ajahn T. Youth Lab, nah, you can contact him directly and maybe contact people to see this is how uh, you are like in Thailand. I think within the end of this year, the COVID situation should be better, then you are all welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Ajahn. Well, I, I have been using the word Ajahn. <laughs> well, I, I, I forgot to mention, in Thailand, uh, we call our professors uh, as uh, Ajahn with respect. And whenever we meet them, like we, we uh, close our hands, just like we do Namaskar and we vote to them. Uh, with with all respect, <laughs> so it is Thai culture, and I really love that culture. <laughs> In fact, uh, Laisha is really good student. She got the selection to go to Hokkaido University to do the internship. However, because of COVID, <laughs> the internship was cancelled because the COVID. In fact, we really encourage the student of SIT to not doing research inside SIT, but have chance to go to a board with our partner university. This is one of the biggest one is from Japan. They provide not only the air ticket, but also the other accommodation and stipend. Now, if not COVID, Laisha, you have the chance to go to Hokkaido about three weeks, right? Mm. Yes, Sajan. <laughs> really sorry, now. <laughs> yes, Sajan, it was bad. <laughs> If the, that was the case, the program, this program would not have been possible. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I would uh, really 
it as that after a mm -hmm. few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> but again, you are telling you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you can share the website here in the chat for everyone. Oh, sure, sure. Okay. Okay, so if uh, there are no more questions, uh, maybe I would like to add uh, some remarks about this idea is that um, they provide, uh, th this uh, opens up a gate to other universities or higher education or industrial uh, qualifications. Uh, uh, as Dr. Wahi also mentioned that Raisa got selected in uh, some inter internship in Hokkaido University. I also had a similar sense. I. Uh, a chance to present one of my paper in Japan, the conference. So yeah, they, there are many other open, open op, opportunities that you get after you come here. And uh, and I believe that many of uh, ICT students, uh, they get at least one chance to visit Japan on some, some, some purpose, or maybe any neighboring countries uh, for at least conference, or will be able to attend uh, some international conference, more than one. So thank you, Raisa, for sharing the website. Yeah. In fact, I plan to send the Laisha to do the internship at Hokkaido and would like her to go another country to give the presentation about. <laughs> yes, I can. I wish both, both the opportunities. <laughs> yeah, really sorry. <laughs> So if there is any more query uh, from the student side, first year students, like you can, uh, like Mr. Bipul is an expert in the field of deep learning as well. He has, I think, reviewed almost all existing deep learning uh, methods in his recent uh, research article as well. So if you want to have any uh, questions for him, any confusions uh, as you might be in some questions uh, confusions right now then you can you can have the question okay so uh, if, if no more question then uh, i think uh, we can move towards uh, the end of today's program uh, Dr. Tirayut uh, had some work, so he left in the, mid, uh, in the middle itself. So till end, we have uh, Dr. Wari and Mr. Bipu with us uh, from SIID till the end of the program. And uh, uh, we got a question, but uh, okay, it's okay. So now, finally, I like to request our principal engineer, Lochan Lal Amate, uh, for uh, the closing of the uh, of today's webinar. Uh, Mr. Amate, the stage is yours. Thank you, thank you, Raisa. Uh, today, I think this program was a very wonderful program. I think it's a very successful. I think all the participants uh, not only enjoyed but they learned a lot from Dr. Wari. Uh, Professor Dr. Tirayut, and especially from Mr. Bipul uh, about this AI and doing uh, some uh, research work in SIIT, Thammasada University. And special, my special thanks to Dr. Wari for uh, allowing us to apply uh, for higher studies and internship. Uh, definitely, uh, it might be due to Raisha's success in SIIT. Definitely in our college, uh, we have many races, races, I think mm -hmm. will be successful to get scholarship in your institution. Uh, I think today uh, is eye opening for all our participants, even for us about this uh, AI implementation in uh, especially in agriculture, in medicine, in urban planning which is very much uh, fruitful and important in Nepal side also. I think uh, we can get a lot of help from Bipul and our fourth year students, uh, those who are just uh, beginning to start their project works, I think uh, they may get help from you. I think I hope uh, Bipul will not hesitate to 
assist us in this regard. Uh, definitely, this is the, I think it's the starting one. Uh, we can cooperate uh, in the future also for uh, further uh, research and some other activities. I think uh, as Raisa is coordinating for all of this, I think our college will appoint her as a liaison officer or corresponding officer. She will be coordinating and liaisoning with all our students and our, or our faculties. Uh, special uh, thanks to uh, Dr. Wari for giving us a wonderful uh, opportunity to know your uh, Thamasad University. We are not about, about this type of international affiliation. We are, in Bangkok, we talk only about AIT. And I came to know that AIT was established by Thamasad. Thamasad gave the land to build AIT. That means AIT, Thamasad is so strong. I said being a government institution also is so strong. And this SIIT, especially for this uh, engineering background, I think uh, we will be getting a lot of benefit. And as our college is the affiliated of Institute of Engineering Cuban University, we are eligible to apply for this. Uh, we'll discuss with the Dean of Institute of Engineering also in this regard uh, for further collaboration and further uh, activities, academic activities, at least in this uh, pandemic period as soon as possible. And this will help uh, to know each other and to enhance uh, the research capabilities of our students also. Uh, with this uh, remark, I once again thank you and special thanks to Kapil sir giving his opening remark. It was very good remarks he has given in the opening. And once again, thank you, Dr. Wari, Dr. Tirayut, and special thanks to Mr. Bipul Nepani for the voice. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Mr. Amate, for your uh, closing remark. Uh, so at the end, once again, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Wari, Dr. Tirayut, Mr. Bipul for your valuable presence and wonderful presentations and talks. Uh, I strongly believe uh, that all of our audience uh, got to learn a lot of new things and got uh, a lot of inspirations. And uh, um, I'm, I'm very glad and thankful uh, uh, for, for the presentation from Dr. Wari regarding all the scholarship uh, provi uh, provisions that uh, society has and, and she shared it among us. And I, I really hope uh, that uh, Advanced College of Engineering and Management uh, will, will be able, uh, will have good relations with society in future in uh, various dimensions. So uh, I, will, I will be happy and glad to connect the two universities. And I, I, I expect and uh, hope to have uh, good support from both the universities. And uh, let's hope that today's first communication will be uh, a step for futures, uh, for the good relationship and uh, for the, uh, uh, that we will be able to bring good products as a uh, good output students, uh, just like Mr. Bipul. <laughs> uh, through uh, the combination of Advanced College of Engineering and SIIT Thammasat University. With this note, uh, I'd like to thank all, the, uh, all of our audience departments from Advanced College of Engineering and Management, students from SIIT, our respected guests, and all uh, other audiences uh, yeah, beyond SIIT and ACM for joining our webinar and making it a success. Thank you all. Have a good, uh, good, good evening. Namaskar. Thank you very much, Raisa. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.